everyone, I'm Miss Meg, and I'm here to tell you about bullet journaling for kids. Today we're going to talk about organizing your time with the use of calendars, which is a big thing in bullet journaling. So, the first thing I did, and I think I showed you this the last time, is I, the first thing I did is I made year of the rest of my year months to the rest end of the year. So I started with September and I did all my months till the end of the year. Now, this is an artist loft journal and the way I did this, and you don't have to do it this way, but I found it nice to do it this way, is I wrote September on the top, then I wrote the beginning letters of each of the days of the week, and then I made a three by three inch, or not inch, but three by three dot square. And I made enough for the month. Now, you need to remember when September started or whatever month you're starting on, what day it begins on, and you have to remember how many days you have in the month. Now, the way I do that is that old little rhyme that goes something like, 30 days, half September, April, June, and November, all the rest have 31, except for February, which has 28, except when it's a leap year, it's 29. And that's how I remember this, and that's when I was making these, I kept saying that rhyme to myself. So if you do that, like I said, it's good to put two on a page, or if your notebook's bigger, maybe you want to do three on a page. You want to leave some space underneath because then you can write maybe birthdays or special events that are happening during those months underneath. And that way you can keep track of what's happening during that time. Then, after you do that, you want to go to monthly journals or monthly calendars. And... In a monthly calendar, that's not my monthly calendar. Okay, there it is. I did a four by four dot. I used four dots for this, or you can use a ruler, and I think it adds up to like a three fourth inch or something um, if you're doing it in a notebook. And I made it big enough that I can write in each of the squares because I like to track things when I do my month. I like to track the weather. I like to track the moods I'm having that day. And I like to be able to say some of the things that are happening during that month that are important. That's one way you can do a month. In one of my other journals, I had a month like this because it didn't feel it felt too squished if I was making it this way, so I decided to turn it and I made it this way. And you can see I decorated some. And again, I made sure that I had it big enough that I could, I kept track of the weather again. And you can write in each of the squares. So those are some of the things you can do with monthly. Monthly, then you take it down and you break it down to weekly. So for weekly, there are a lot of different ways you can organize your journal for weekly. You can just put the month and the, da the dates of the week and then make little squares for each of that and put what's important during each of those days of the, days of the week. Or you can do, if it's easier, just write the day and the date. Leave a little space and do the next day and the date and keep doing that and then go on the other side and do the same thing. And then you have space to write what's important. Maybe you want to write down, oh, I have a homework assignment that's due on Thursday. I have a, a sports event coming on Wednesday. Whatever. You have a chore that you need to get done on Friday. So you would write those things down during that week. Other ways that I've done my week is, and I 
found this works for me, but you have to find something that works for you. Remember, this is your journal. You have to make this work for you. So for weekly, I just showed the week, and then I drew little boxes underneath. And I put in what events are happening that week, or you can put in, if you want to remember things that happened during each of those days, you can just slip something in, oh, this really happened, it was really important, and I want to remember it, so I put it in there. And that's how you can do a weekly type journal, or a weekly part of your journal. Then we get to daily, because daily you can do a lot and say a lot in your daily journal. You can t keep notes about what happens each day. You can draw pictures of the day. If you are really artistic or just like to draw, you can just doodle and make pictures and to remind you of what's happened during the day. Maybe you want to keep track of happy times you had that day or unhappy times, books you are reading, homework that needs to get completed. Maybe you want to keep track of funny things that have happened during the time, or chores you need to do. Now, one thing that I came up with as a template was something like this, where you have your notes, you have something happy that happens, you have something unhappy, something bad during the day, a thankful, maybe you have something you want to be grateful for that happened that day, and maybe something you learned. You don't have to do it this way. Again, this is just an idea, but you can come up with your own ideas and see what works for you. It takes a while to see what actually works for you. I have something very, 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 very simple. I like to journal a lot, so I just journal, and then I write something I'm thankful for, and in this box I write what I ate that day. But that's what I do. That's how I like to do it. So those are some of the ideas you can do for daily journaling. So think about the fact that this is your journal. You make it the way you want to make it. And think about how you want, what time periods you want to do for months, for weeks, and what you want to put in that week, what's important to put in the week, and what you want to write for your day. So during this time, enjoy journaling again. And until next time, we're going to be doing and talking about how you fit goals into your bullet journal. So have fun, and I'll see you next time.